everybody and welcome to echo live happy friday we have another very exciting program planned for everyone joining us on our various platforms today hello to everyone joining us through facebook through youtube and right here in zoom remember that using the chat feature is a great way to communicate with us throughout the entire program today you can use it to introduce yourself tell us where you're watching from tell us are you still in school or have you started your summer vacation yet? We love hearing all about your lives outside of Echo, um, but especially you can use that chat to ask and answer questions, to bring up ideas and suggestions for things that you might like to see us try right here on the show. Now, today's program is going to be facilitated by Raul. Um, so Raul is going to go ahead and join on in and Raul has a very cool program planned for all of us watching to teach us about some life hacks. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, what is a life hack? Um, so let's go ahead and have Raul join us and we will find out. If you happen to know or have a life hack of your own, you can go ahead and mention it in the chat. So, hey Raul, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Hi everybody. Welcome. All so right, so we've got those... lots of friends joining in in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pop out here and I'll let you take it away. Thanks. So to those of us already here, I want you to go ahead and put into the chat, uh, what do you think are some of the most revolutionary inventions ever made? Some of the most important inventions. Go ahead and put that into the chat. Uh, today we're going to be talking about life hacks. And you've probably already seen videos of life hacks on YouTube or just anywhere on the net. Uh, so my life hacks I'm, I'm going to show you today also have to do a lot with recycling, conservation. So hopefully this will get uh, at least your brain, uh, at least brainstorming, thinking about, hey, what are some things that I have in my home that I can reuse so that they don't have to go into the landfill for, you know, animals to eat or to slowly degrade, right? So do we have any answers on some of the most revolutionary, important inventions in the history of humanity there yet? Think about it. Well, what are some of the materials that are most commonly seen, at least in things that we buy? Think about that. Maybe cardboard, that's one of them. There's a lot of stuff made out of cardboard. Uh, we use wood to make like plywood, to make paper. Uh, I think I saw somebody post plastic, and that's mainly what today's program is going to be about. Now, invention can be a very good thing, and for the most part, it really is. It's uh, something that we use to make our lives better, to make work much easier, but sometimes uh, some inventions can produce a lot of waste, and our job is to try to lessen waste. You know, I know it's not going to be possible to completely eradicate all waste, but our job, at least to our planet and to the animals on it, and just to other people, is to try to lessen it, right? Before we go into that lesson, uh, for those first timers, I want to talk about our process of invention. You see, invention is a very deliberate process, and uh, we have it here on our PowerPoint. We start by thinking of an idea. Now, when we're thinking about this idea, uh, we want to think about things that affect us or other people, right? Like, hey, there are some things that require a lot of effort for me to do at home. Uh, how can I make those easier? Something as simple as that is our first step. Now, we, when we start to try to solve it, we want to first do some research on it. This is our second step. Let's explore it. So how do we explore? Well, we go on the internet, you go to your local library, you ask experts, you might even find out that there is already a solution to that problem that you can use. But sometimes you might find that that solution might not be good enough, right? So maybe you want to make it a little bit better. This is where you start to think about, hey, how can I build this? How would you start? Well, you start to draw it. This is our third step, this is our sketch it phase. And um, when you're thinking about this, you want to think about practicality, you want to think about the mechanics of that invention, uh, you want to think about storage, you want to think about materials, right? And the next step is create it. That's when you start making a prototype. So that prototype is uh, the test of your invention, right? This is not going to be your final product. So once you create that, you go to the next step, and try it. Does it work? Uh, 
Does it work very well? If not, how can I make it better? Does it not work at all? Well, how can I figure out what's not working, right? And then finally, you go to your tweak it. So tweak it just means you start to play around with it, change those aspects so you can get that object to do what you want it to. And then sometimes you wanna sell it because if it's an original invention, you might as well make some money out of it, right? One thing I do want to make sure that everybody knows is that this process is not linear. You see some lines going between the words. You could start from think it and you can immediately go to create it, right? If you have a bunch of like materials in, in your garage or something, you start putting stuff together and then maybe you draw it, maybe then you do some research. So this process is not set in stone. It's more of an idea on how to approach problem solving, right? And uh, one of the biggest problems that we have today is overuse of plastic. Now plastic stays around for a really long time on the planet and we want to not use as much as we already do. We want to reuse, reduce, and recycle, right? So let's think about practicality. What is one of the places that we might use plastic a lot? Well, let's, let's go to our second PowerPoint slide there. Oh, well, our toothbrushes are made out of plastic. Uh, sometimes we have holders, like the one that I have on my table here, uh, that has four, right? Now, this is cool. You know, it's a very versatile uh, material for us to use. But think about this. Let's say that I went ahead and closed that little door on that second holder. In the age of COVID-19 and the spread of infection, can we already see some potential problems with this holder? What do you think would happen if we all put our toothbrushes into one holder where everything is uh, you know, really bunched up together? And now that it's summer, when we close that, it gets really, really warm. What do you think germs are gonna do in there? Well, obviously they're probably gonna start to reproduce and it's gonna get super duper germy, right? So much like you and I socially distance on the street or in stores, do you think it would be a good idea to maybe socially distance our toothbrushes? I think so. And some of these life hacks are gonna be something you could do today to improve your lives right now, right? So let's go ahead and start brainstorming. Well, uh, let's start brainstorming on materials that we have at home. A lot of us like to drink pop, right? I, I know I like my share of pop. But once we're done with that, we're left with a bottle. A lot of people recycle those. They take them to those machines. You get a little bit of money for that. That's great. Uh, but how can we reuse them? Well, in front of me, and let me go ahead and get a little bit closer so you can see here. I have got a bunch of little bottle caps. And actually, let me do this. Okay. So I have a bunch of bottle caps. I have a piece of rectangular cardboard. I have some scissors, a glue gun, and of course, some toothbrushes and one of these traditional holders. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a toothbrush holder using these recycled materials. Now, one of the biggest challenges that I found out is that these little caps are super duper tough, you know, and cutting them was a big challenge. So a lot of these life hacks I'm gonna show you today, uh, will require adult supervision, right? So I wanna just give you an example of how dirty your toothbrush is. There are about 100 million germs on your toothbrush. They are the third dirtiest thing in your bathroom. And I think that's besides, you know, sponges and washcloths or handles and light switches. So to make our socially distanced toothbrush holder, I need you to have a cap, sanitize that cap and make indents kind of like this. In fact, I want to go ahead and zoom in so you can see how I cut it. Yes. Perfect. You can see that I cut like a square hole that goes right through like that, right? Now, the first method that I used to do this was I actually burnt it. So I took a knife, I superheated it and sliced right through it. Do not do this by yourself. 
you will need adult supervision and help to do this, all right? Now, two days ago, I figured out that using a wire cutter like this is also really, really efficient. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cut there, cut there, and then bend it, right? Now you're left with that. And cut that right off. Do the same, parallel to it. Make sure you don't make it too big. Make it at least a centimeter wide. You don't want your toothbrush falling. Look at that, works like a charm. So now I can take my toothbrush and place it right on there, right? Now, why do I have this piece of cardboard? Let's go back here. Well, this is just gonna serve as a mount. Now you can decorate it with like paint or markers. You can put a bunch of tape on here, this type of tape, just to try to kind of waterproof it. But what you do is you take your hot glue gun, you paste it right on here, and then you put your toothbrush on there, and it works like a charm. Uh, and then on the back, you just glue it to wherever you want, maybe on your mirror. But here is the biggest point. You want your toothbrush to be away from devices that could put a bunch of particulate and germs in the air, like your toilet, your sink, your bathtub. Get it as far uh, removed from those things as possible, and that lowers your risk for infection. Another cool thing to do is try out different types of caps, which ones work better, you know? Some are hotter than others, some are much smaller, some are much bigger. Experiment with that and uh, try to socially distance them by putting one uh, about five inches away from the other. Pretty cool experiment, something you could try at home right now. Now let's go ahead, and move on to my next one here. because These are gonna start to get a little more complicated. So I went shopping yesterday and I have a bunch of these plastic bags just laying around in my house. Now. A lot of people do reuse these, and that's what you should be doing. How long does a plastic bag live on the earth? Well, let, let's think about its function first. Its function is to bring my groceries from the store to my house. That would probably take like maybe an hour. After that, technically it has served its purpose, right? So what happens once uh, this bag is, is uh, fulfilled its purpose? What do you do at home with them? Do you save them? Do you throw them away? Well, it turns out that most people really don't. And that's not good because one bag takes about 500 years in a landfill to decompose. Uh, turns out that Americans use over 100 billion bags a year. And out of those 100 billion bags, uh, to just create them, it takes about 12 billion gallons of oil. What a waste, right? Only 1% of these bags are recycled. The average family per year recycles about 15 bags a year. And you know what? That's not good because this ends up either in the ocean or in the soil. And as it degrades, it releases chemicals. The animals eat them. That's not good for them. It ends up in our food chain and eventually comes back to us. And the cycle continues and continues. In fact, plastic is one of the biggest contaminants in the oceans. It's a super big problem. So what can you and I do to try to reduce that and reuse these. Well, you can make a really cool dispenser. Uh, so what I did is I took a two liter and I also took my wire cutters. I bent it and then I made a little hole on it, right? Once I had that hole ready, I just cut around it and I made two separate little parts. Now, this is a little bit sharp, so I put some tape on there. That's gonna act as my dispenser. Now, there is a very specific way to fold these bags that it will act as one of those napkin uh, or uh, tissue paper dispensers. Here's how you do it. So you take your bag, lay it completely flat, all right? You're going to fold it in half. It's pretty simple. Now, see the little ears? Pop the little ears up like that, okay? and then begin 
to roll the bag. And do it about two thirds of the way, okay? That's step one. The next step is doing a very similar fold. Again, lay it flat, fold it in half. But this time we're not gonna mess with the ears. The ears are gonna stay straight. I'm gonna just place it on top like that. And I'm going to continue rolling. Once I'm done with that, repeat the process. I'll do one more bag. And that should be right about the end. Okay, once you're done with that, grab your dispenser, put it in ears first. Push the ears out like that. And another cool thing you could do is maybe drill a hole in it, have your parents do this because that's dangerous. Uh, one thing that I did was I heated up a nail and uh, put it in there, worked like a charm. Again, don't do it by yourself. You can take that out and look at that. One comes out right after the other. Super nifty, super cool. And uh, something that you can do today. So I also have this thing left over. Well, usually this would go to the trash, right? Again, you could use it as a little holder. Uh, make sure you decorate it or repurpose, repurpose this for something else. Maybe make it a flower pot. Uh, you know, your imagination is the limit to invention. And uh, if you come up with some cool ideas, make sure that you tag us. Okay. Now, my friend Anna actually showed me a really cool trick on how to put a one of these bags into your garbage can. And I don't have a small enough garbage can, unfortunately, but she told me that you could just use air pressure to put the bag, I believe it was inside out like that, over your garbage can, and then you just push it in. Super cool, super easy. Because if you just put it in like this, all inflated, well, you gotta create a high pressure zone and this thing won't go in, right? Super cool thing, just a little tip and trick that I wanted to share with you all. And I actually have one uh, really cool life hack that's related to this. I finished sanitizing some stuff the other day and these were just alcoholic wipes. You could just use this instead of using that plastic bottle. Doesn't work as well, unfortunately. But it also works as a dispenser. If you have that lying around, don't throw it away, repurpose it. Okay, now this next one is a little more complicated. Uh, have you guys ever had a birthday party and you needed to blow up balloons? You probably have. Now, after blowing a bunch of balloons up, you're probably gonna get dizzy, you're gonna get tired, and that's never fun. If you don't have a pump readily available, you can make your own, all right? And we're gonna do this using one of these bottles as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be a smaller one like this. You could also use a two liter. But here is the process that I went through. So you wanna make sure to have at least two balloons, one to inflate and one to cut out a square piece. Let me do this because this is a little bit hard because they're curved. It's okay, if it doesn't work out, I have this one that I know works. I want to show you the process. And one more cut. Boom. Not exactly perfect, but it is square inch. The next thing that I did was that I took my nail, again, do not do this by yourself, do it with an adult. And I grabbed some pliers and I put this over a Bunsen burner. You can use your stove to get it super heated. I then made a tiny little hole with it. Well, it's actually on here. Just inserted it in there, right? You don't wanna make that hole too big, but you want it to be small enough for your thumb to be able to cover it. You'll see why in a second. Now, I also did the same thing with the cap. 
This one should be at least a centimeter by half a centimeter wide. Uh, you can just use your pinky finger to measure it. So going this way, probably big enough, and then half of that. And what you do is you go ahead and add a little piece of balloon on top, just like that. And then you're going to tape it. Now, I used electrical tape because it's a lot more stretchy and it bonds really great. Let's just use this cap so you can see what I did. So what I did was I taped it off on three sides. So there, there's my three sides. And one side isn't taped. It's open. Once I did that, I wrapped even more tape around there to keep it secure. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I want air to be able to get in. So right now, this thing is at equilibrium with the atmosphere, right? If I put my finger in there or on here and I squeeze, suddenly I create a high pressure zone in here and all of that air is forced out of that hole, right? Now, if I go ahead and remove my finger, the high pressure from the outside wants to go into the low pressure zone, right? So that'll inflate again. But here's the cool thing. Because when you have a balloon on here, uh, that balloon is now high pressure, that high pressure is going to press down on that little piece of balloon and it won't escape very fast. So this is basically a really basic form of a valve, right? And I want to prove that to you. Check this out. Put it over the cap like that. Put your thumb on here. Press. Release. Press again. Now with the summer and upcoming parties, you have a nifty little trick to be able to inflate a lot of balloons and to do it in a very eco-friendly way. Now let's go back to that PowerPoint. I wanna show you one last thing, just so you get a perspective on how much plastic we waste. So you'll see that we have three parts on this, on this chart. So you have about 50% uh, those are just things that we throw away, water bottles, plastic bags, straws. Uh, most of our plastic is just disposable. That's not a good thing, right? The other is part of our infrastructure and pipes or and, you know, electricity. And then the other 25% is in more permanent things like PVC pipe, uh, in cars, all that good stuff. So you know, we want to make sure to reduce all of this waste so that other people in the future and that so, so that other uh, people and animals, right, because they're affected by this too, the plants, uh, so the planet can be a, a better place to live in, right? So make sure that you adopt this type of philosophy and you try a bunch of these things because it's really important in the long run. Uh, I think that's my time. If anyone has any questions, I want to take these last few minutes to answer all of them. While we wait for that, I have grabbed a couple materials in case people were curious about my trash, trash bag trick. Um, yes. It is one of the, my favorite things that I've learned on the internet ever, which is saying something because I love to spend time on the internet, just like I'm sure we all do. Um, but this was the life hack that I actually found online, and it told me that I've basically been using trash bags wrong my whole life. Um, so like Raul said, usually we take our trash bags um, whether it's a small one like this, like I know I saw that Steve said that he reuses his um, plastic bags for maybe the smaller trash cans in your house. Like I know I have one in my bedroom and this is about the perfect size um, bag for that. Um, it's better right not to use these bags at all, but if you are going to use them, it's great that you're getting more than one use out of them. Um, so whether you use a small bag like this or a really big one for maybe your kitchen or um, outside trash bag, um, this trick works the same. So like Raul said, usually we take the bag and we, Puff it up, fill it full of air, right? So it will take out, um, take up the maximum amount of space within your trash can or what I have here is a bucket, right? And so you might hold it in this kind of shape and you try to shove it down inside and you'll notice that the air resistance, right? That area of high pressure under the bag is pushing back on me um, because that air takes up space, even though we can't see it. But what I learned is instead of doing that and instead of trying to fight the force of air pressure, which we've learned here on Echo Live is not going to happen, right? Air pressure is strong, even though we can't necessarily see it. Um, if instead you take the bag 
and you just drape it over the entire thing just like this if you push down just right on the center with your the point of your finger it goes right into the bag now there's a big gap on the inside just like you'd like so you can fit all of your um trash or waste or recycling in here and then you can easily just tie it up and throw it away right so easy life hack like we said it works with any size bag takes much less effort and much less time. And now think about all of those seven seconds I can spend doing all sorts of other science instead of fidgeting around with my trash bag. <laughs> um, so let's see. Um, a lot of people are noting um, how much plastic we do go to waste. Now, I don't know that either of us knows the exact answer to this, but um, a couple of people are asking, you know, how much plastic do we release into the ocean every year? And maybe we don't know the answer to that question, um, but Maybe, Raul, do you have any answers of how we could prevent that? Yeah, uh, to prevent it, recycle, reuse the stuff that, that you know you have in your house. Uh, try not to dispose of your things on the grass because that will eventually end up in you know, the animals, ecosystems, and rivers and oceans. That's just one step and it's really easy. You should be doing that anyways, right? Mm -hmm. um, Steve asked a great question. He asked, how do you take the balloon off the pump without losing the air that you've inflated it with? Good question. So, what I like to do is I just like to kind of pinch it and then take off the thing. Or tie it up. Like oh, that. twisting Twist it, it seems like a good and idea, yeah. That, that really works. Good question. Awesome. Thank you. Let's see, any last questions? Um, someone in Zoom is asking about the Science Center reopening. Now, you might have seen our announcement yesterday, or you might have seen that I was actually at the Science Center yesterday getting us ready to reopen. I'm not exactly sure on the exact date. We are still, like we said, just making sure we have every last detail finalized. You can definitely expect to visit the Science Center sometime in early July. Um, someone is specifically asking about coming over from Canada. And unfortunately, that's just a little bit out of our control, but I have hopes that the border will reopen very soon and allow people to cross back over the border. Um, if you look at my background behind me, you might know that, or if you are from Canada, you might know that this picture had to have been taken from Canada um, across the water. So this photo was taken in Windsor, which gives us a really beautiful view of the Renaissance Center and behind me, the Penobscot building and all of our other beautiful skyscrapers in downtown Detroit. Um, so fingers crossed that border will open very, very soon so that you can come visit us in um, this summer um, because it's gonna be really exciting to get to do some science with us in person instead of just over here on the camera. But we're so excited that you're interested in coming to visit us. Um, we hope everyone will wanna come visit us as well. Um, of course, I think we're getting towards the end of our program. So as always, big thank you to our program sponsors like Ford Motor Company Fund and Denso. These programs are going to continue airing every day through the end of June. And then once we reopen to the public, um, they are going to allow us to bring these programs to you through the summer as well, even if it's not every single day. Um, of course, we will be back here on Monday with even more Echo Live. We hope you'll come to check it out because we've got a very cool chemistry themed program with some really exciting, very bright reactions to show you. So that's all I'll tell you for now, but I promise Monday's show will be very, very cool. We hope we'll see you all there. Until then, if you're looking for some science to do at home this weekend, check out the Michigan Science Center's website, try out some of Raul's life hack inventions on your own. And of course, have a great rest of your day and we'll see you Monday.